The secret to long-term health improvement is to build a wellness journey on top of the data and tell the users an unfolding story about how they're getting better over time. We dug deep into this in my recent conversation with Levels co-founder Casey Means, who shared five tips for creating a wellness journey around CGM, the revolutionary technology for measuring blood sugar levels continuously. Listen in. Welcome, Casey, to Game Thinking TV. Thank you so much, Amy, for having me. So excited to get a chance to talk to you. I was really taken with your background. You're, of course, an MD, but it looks like you've specialized in functional medicine and preventive medicine. Is that correct? Yeah, my core focus these days is how to make people healthier in a foundational way. So not just how to react to symptoms, react once disease has fully manifested, but really how to empower people with personal information so they can understand their bodies better and then make better day-to-day choices that lead to conditions in the body that help it function better. So how did you come to that point of view going through what was perhaps a more traditional medical journey? What were the awakenings along the way that really led you to that? It really started when I was young because I've always been very interested in nutrition. When I was at Stanford as an undergrad, I was there during the personalized genomics revolution. 23andMe was coming online. I worked there as an undergrad. We were seeing the Human Genome Project wrapping up. And so it was this really interesting time for the intersection of nutrition and genetics. And I focused quite a bit on nutrigenomics, which is how nutrients and chemical compounds in food change gene expression. And this was so fascinating to me because it was really like, oh, I thought we had this blueprint that is our genome is our fate. And what I realized is you have this power every time you eat to really change the fate of your body, your mind. And that was just so empowering to me. So flash forward, went to medical school and you know, the average medical student's getting like probably 10 or less hours of nutrition training in four years, which was really shocking to me. I ended up actually going into, um, (laughs) of all things, head and neck surgery, ear, nose, and throat, and I trained as a surgeon. So in ENT, I was dealing with primarily disorders of inflammation. So sinusitis, thyroiditis, laryngitis, and these are all these itises, that's the suffix meaning inflammation in the body. And so what if we step back and say, like, what causes inflammation? We know that so many of these strange industrially processed foods we're eating in our modern diet are drivers of inflammation. And one of the biggest drivers of inflammation in the body is high blood sugar and poor metabolic health. And what's interesting is that that right there is not just a driver of inflammation, but it's also a driver of almost every chronic disease we're seeing. Blood sugar plays a role in obviously obesity and diabetes, but also Alzheimer's disease, heart disease, stroke, depression, anxiety, infertility, erectile dysfunction, autoimmune disease, chronic pain, chronic fatigue, It's got its hand in everything. And I just sort of said, okay, this is an epidemic. We have so many people in this country dealing with potentially preventable chronic illnesses. We got to figure out solutions that scale. And that led me to starting Levels because what Levels does is it gives people wearable technology that tells them every day, day in and day out, what's happening to their blood sugar levels. It empowers people with their own information to make better choices so that we can live healthier lives. So Levels, I've noticed is fundamentally a software solution. You've partnered with Abbott, I believe. We use a hardware that's off the shelf from uh, medical hardware manufacturers, Abbott and Dexcom. Yeah. Got it. Okay. So one of the things that's interesting in this space, this exploding CGM metabolic fitness space is what's happening with smartwatches. The promise is that by next year, perhaps, Some form of continuous glucose monitoring, CGM, will be built into watches using optical technology. A lot of these technologies are being developed and intended for the type 1 and the type 2 diabetic community, but I think because it's non-invasive, it's going to be very popular for the non-diabetic community who is looking to use this as more of the wellness use case, like what Levels is doing. So we're certainly thrilled about that technology coming online. For us as a company, for Levels, Our mission is to make this data stream actionable and insight driven for people because raw data on its own is a big step up, but to create actionable insights out of the data is how we're going to actually achieve our mission as a company. What you just said is 
the issue for designers in digital health, which is making meaning out of data. I'm a game designer. That's where I came from. And we struggle with this all the time. It's not easy to create the right delta on top of the data, not just the data itself, to design activities that are sustainable. Most of the simple things you might try probably don't work. What have you learned as you've been running experiments, creating experiences in a delta that's not just the raw data, but on top of data? Yeah. So I think basic premise is that closed loop biofeedback is really necessary for sustainable behavior change. And we've never had that with nutrition. Nutrition has always been this nebulous open loop system that makes it very difficult to create long-term change. And what I mean by that is I could adopt some new dietary philosophy, like I'm going to eat chia seeds every day. And I start doing that. Well, depending on what my goals are, it may be very, very difficult to see the impact of that. If it's that I want better mental health, it may be weeks. If it's weight, well, maybe my weight changes 0.2 pounds the next day. If it's cholesterol, I'm waiting six months for a cholesterol test. I have no idea. But to be able to actually create a one-to-one -one relationship between food and what's happening, that's something we've never, ever, ever had in nutrition before. We've actually had it now for some of the other pillars of health, like sleep, stress, and exercise, because we have all these you know, fitness trackers. We've got smart watches that measure our stress, that measure our sleep, that measure our heart rate. We actually can get feedback on those things, but we've never had that for nutrition. Then in terms of specific features that I think are really helpful for people, one I think is magic moments and narrative. One of my favorite examples is our CEO, Sam Corcos, who he was eating oatmeal basically every single day for breakfast for most of his life. And and then mid-morning, he always had sort of like a mid-morning slump and was a little bit tired and went for the second cup of coffee. And like that was just a part of his routine. Like before lunch, I get tired. So then I eat lunch. What he realized when he put a continuous glucose monitor on is that his glucose was going up like 100 points after eating the oatmeal in the morning. And then he'd come crashing down. And right when he crashed was when he felt tired and lethargic and a little brain fog, needed that second cup of coffee, and of course wanted to eat again to get his blood glucose levels back up. So he just totally shifted his breakfast. He started eating eggs with avocado, which is much lower carb, you know, a lot of nutrient density. His glucose was totally stable after breakfast, completely eradicated that post-meal slump, gave him sustained energy. He never felt panicked for lunch around noon. And so to be able to link that action to an objective data. And then the third piece is linking it to that subjective experience, that trifecta of subjective, objective, and choice, I think is really an important for inspiring adoption and agency and change. I think it has the, really the ability to change the way we even view ourselves. Like we might think of ourselves as someone who gets tired or someone who gets anxious mid-afternoon, but to be able to have an answer of like, why might that be happening? It's really a powerful identity shift and, right. and an empowerment. So I think magic moments are one and that feeds into the idea of narrative. I like to say that every glucose curve has a story. Each glucose curve, you eat something, it goes up, it comes down, it takes a certain while to come down. Maybe it, you have a dip after, which is what we call reactive hypoglycemia, comes back to normal. You're doing all these things during that time. Maybe you're taking a walk after your snack. Maybe you got in an argument with someone and that caused your glucose to go up. But each of them really has a narrative. And, and the more we can tie people to sort of that, I think that's useful. Just to break it down, levels as an app syncs with the Abbott, for instance, the Abbott's native app that ships with it. Now, in the Abbott's native app, you can see your data, you can see your raw data, and you can see all your curves over time. So as levels, you're building something on top of that. And as a designer, I know how hard this is <laughs> in practice. You know, the obvious things often don't work. What else have you tried to go beyond just what's in those built-in apps and more than just the data itself? In our challenge curriculum, essentially, we give people the opportunity to try things that they might not have thought about before. Try a whole fruit and then try the juice version. Try fruit and then try it with fat and protein. Try that fruit with fat, protein, and a walk. And then if we built features to basically surface what you've learned from that, we have a compare feature, for instance, that takes your challenges, takes different permutations of choices that you've made, maps them on top of each other in a format that lets you really see clearly 
what adjuncts to your food and lifestyle are useful for getting a more stable glucose curve, which is ultimately what we want. So with that, you know, you're able to visualize it, but then also put those learnings into your metabolic toolbox. If taking a walk, a 15 minute walk after a meal brings my glucose spike down, goes into the toolbox. If adding fiber to a carbohydrate helps, it goes in there. So really helping people explore that, create opportunities for that, make it engaging and fun. We do a similar thing with our activity catalog. If people do log in a way that's thorough, they're going to get more value out of that. And we've created some interesting metrics and scores that help really make that logging especially rewarding. So one is called our zone score. In just like looking at your CGM data, you'll see a curve, right? And you might go from glucose of 70 to a glucose of 120 after a meal. But that's a little bit amorphous. It's hard to know what to do with that. So we've created a proprietary metrics that essentially take a lot of information about your glucose curve and spit it out into like an easy one through 10 score, essentially 10 being least metabolic response, one being a huge metabolic response. So that gives people this little nugget of like, okay, I did the action and then I got something useful out of it that goes into my activity catalog and it's something I can share. We see people post these and be excited and proud of what they've accomplished with these scores. So you're seeing people turn those scores into viral outreach for you. you do, yeah. And often it's That's things exciting. that were most surprising to them. You know, like I ate five different fruits and for some reason, grapes made me go 50 points higher than every other fruit. That's something that like no one's ever really been able to prove to anyone else before. And so then you can start to get into population data and how are people reacting across the population, which I think is also very fun and interesting because everyone wants to know where do they stack up compared to other people. And so it not only helps you kind of get into that aspect of things, but also solidifies this really important point in medicine that is lost in a lot of regular medicine, which is biochemical individuality. We're all different. That's really interesting that there's such a wide variety. So for instance, some people might not respond the same way to oatmeal as your co-founder. Oh, for sure. There was a really big paper five years ago out of the journal Cell that was called personalized nutrition by prediction of glycemic responses. And they put continuous glucose monitors on 800 healthy people and then gave them standardized meals. And you would expect if it's a standardized meal with the same carb composition, everyone's going to respond the same. That's the whole premise behind the glycemic index. A piece of food has an inherent value of how it raises blood sugar. But the opposite was true. The idea that there's a one size fits all diet for everyone, it's just really false because everyone responds differently. And what might be a good metabolic choice for person A might not be for person B. You know, it's so interesting because in a way, it's a huge surprise. It goes against so much of what we were growing up to believe. Here's a great diet. It should work for everyone, right? And yet, if you look at all the different places all over the world, humans have colonized and survived. Of course, humans survive on different diets. Right. You know? Yeah. And so it does actually make sense when you just think about human history. Yeah. It's almost unavoidable in our country to have some sort of metabolic disease. And that's all been in the context of eat this rigid diet that basically says, you know, six to 11 servings of grains per day. Right now, tell us where things are at. Are you still in beta? Is it open? Where are things? We are still in a beta program right now. So we're refining our product. We're getting intensive customer feedback. And we've had about 6,000 people go through our beta program. You know, entrepreneurship is always full of surprises. Over the last year, say, as you've been intensively watching and listening and shaping your product, what was something that surprised you? Well, I think what is so important and fantastic about getting your product into the hands of people so early, even when you think you are so not ready to put it out into the world and like embarrassed to put it out into the world, people will just start using your product in ways you could never have expected. And that just teaches you so, so much. I've actually been surprised by the wide variety of the customer persona that we're seeing. It ranges all across the board and each of them seem to find value in some aspect of the product. So for instance, 
We've got, of course, like people who are into personalized nutrition. They want objective data to cut through the food marketing and cut through the loud voices, the controversial voices in nutrition. They want objective data to guide them. Then we've got like the weight loss community, people who have been reading a lot of these books about how glucose and insulin affect weight and who really want to get their hands on something to help them with that. But then we've got people with infertility and polycystic ovarian syndrome who, again, they've heard in books and on podcasts and in research that glucose has a strong relationship with polycystic ovarian syndrome, which is the leading cause of infertility in the country. Then the athletic community has just like run with this. We have tons of pro athletes in our program. We've got NHL, NFL, NBA. And with that, you know, the pro sports community, they're looking for any advantage to refine their fueling, refine their recovery. We also know for endurance athletes like runners, many of them actually want to train in a low glucose state so they can actually become better fat burners during their endurance training. Those are four of 20 different types of personas that have used the product in different ways. But what's neat about glucose is that everyone can really benefit from less glucose variability, from less glycemic excursions, meaning like big ups and big downs all throughout the day. And so you don't actually have to build a different product necessarily for all those different people, for the pro athlete, for the person focused on PCOS, for the person trying to achieve weight loss, because the end result is we want things to be more stable. So it's really about building the perfect, you know, single product that really can affect a lot of different people, regardless of their goals. Then there's education. There can be people who come in and use this as a platform to share what they do. So let's say there's a fitness influencer or an NFL player who wants to share their journey with a wider population. It becomes a platform for them, which is mutually beneficial, right? It it gives them something to share that's interesting and novel. It also creates a lot of education around what their goal is for other people. This could be true for a celebrity nutritionist. It could be true for an up-and-coming nutritionist. It could be true for a weight loss coach. So I think there's ways to differentiate the use cases, not actually by building different products, but by building different um, ways for people to use it. And those are all on our, our roadmap. That's fascinating. Wow. So this field is exploding. You're right there on the cutting edge, making change. Is there anything particularly exciting coming up in the next few months that we should know about that you've got your eyes on? Mm. So many things. One of the things I'm really excited about just in terms of the landscape of biowearables is the future of multi-analyte sensing. I think that there are so many other biomarkers that would give us a lot more insight into our diet if we were to track that would help us really refine even more what we should be eating. Glucose can help refine it somewhat, but a few additional analytes could really unlock it more. Food is very important for our overall foundational health, but it's necessary, but it's not sufficient. If we don't have stress management dialed in, if we don't have sleep dialed in, if we don't have movement dialed in, we're never gonna have optimal function in the body. And that kind of gets into this whole regenerative agriculture movement and like healing the earth and fewer pesticides, fewer endocrine disruptors in our food. It really comes down to building a better food system by focusing on foundational health individual empowerment, the earth, and high quality food. Well, that's a future I want to live in. (laughs) Thank you so much for joining us. This is fascinating and can't wait to see where Levels goes. And I'm so excited for you to open up the product and bring in all those many tens of thousands of people who can be helped by what you're doing. Thank you so much. This was wonderful to chat with you, Amy. Absolutely. Look forward to talking soon. So there you have it five tips for turning raw data into a compelling customer journey. Highlight magic moments. Every curve tells a story. Build a personal toolbox. Support meaningful sharing. Customize through education. Want to learn how to create a compelling customer journey for your product? Join our free learning community, the Game Thinking Hub, at gamethinking.io slash hub. I'll see you there.